As most people already know, SpaceX has major plans for expansion into space, and they've already planned events such as tourist trips around the moon to happen in 2023. In only two short years, a small group of people will be sent off into space and orbit the moon. Think about how close that is. And if it doesn't stir up a little bit of excitement in you, then maybe this will. Elon Musk, SpaceX's founder, has made claims that he is highly confident humans will be on Mars by the year 2026. Recently, SpaceX has disclosed details about their new next-generation Starship launch system and how the company needs some regulatory approvals before they can launch their first orbital test flight. However, the suborbital launch test of the Starship SN15 was declared a success by SpaceX despite some mechanical errors shortly after a successful landing. Starship SN15 launched from Boca Chica on May 5, 2021 and managed a soft landing. SN15 was in the sky for 5 minutes and 59 seconds before landing back on the ground. SpaceX admitted to a few minor snags in the landing process that included a post-flight fire that was put out within 20 minutes. Although this was still considered a successful test flight, even though they later stated there was a minor issue with a lower than expected engine thrust which resulted in a hard landing instead of a soft one. Now, you might be wondering how the first orbital test flight would differ from a suborbital test. Well, in the simplest of terms, it would include the entire Starship vehicle launching from Boca Chica, Texas to reach orbit and then landing safely back on the ground. It would perform less than one full orbit before landing in the Pacific Ocean just outside of Kaua, Hawaii. This launch would include the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship's upper stage. The Super Heavy Booster is the 220-foot tall lower section of the latest generation of Starship. It encases the engine units and is mostly responsible for the launch process. The Super Heavy will be home to 28 Raptor engines in the final version. A Raptor engine is a group of full-flow stage combustion cycle rocket engines that were specifically designed by SpaceX. They will be an integral part of the two-stage-to-orbit launch system that SpaceX is planning to use. A two-stage-to-orbit launch is just what it sounds like. It's a launch where the spacecraft will have two distinct stages providing propulsion consecutively to help them get into orbit. The Super Heavy is planned to land safely and be fully reusable after detaching from the Starship's upper stage. The Starship's upper stage is planned to be fully reusable as well and boasts a total of six Raptor engine units on board. This is going to be the 160-foot tall top piece of the Starship that is planning to launch atop the Super Heavy booster once all regulatory approvals are made. When this test flight is approved, it will happen in Boca Chica. The Starship will launch from its platform and head up towards its orbital goal. Once the launch is commenced, things will proceed quickly. Just 169 seconds after the 28 Raptor engine launched the SpaceX vehicle into the sky, they will shut down. And in only two short seconds after that, the Super Heavy booster will detach itself from the spacecraft. After five seconds of separation, the Starship upper stage will ignite its six Raptor engines and it will continue its journey until it reached orbit. 352 seconds after separation, the Starship engines will shut down and they will have achieved orbit. That's only 521 seconds after liftoff and they will be in orbit. That's just under 9 minutes. SpaceX has been with us since May 6 of 2002 and that's only 19 years. It's one of the younger space engineering companies out there. And I believe they've shown us enough proof to trust in their timeline for what some are calling the modern space race. The original space race happened in the mid-1950s during the Cold War. It was originally between two combatants, the United States and the USSR or Soviet Union. The goal here was simple. While there was an arms race going on at the time between the two, they were also racing to achieve superior spaceflight capabilities. The current space war is very different, but also pretty much the same thing. It's no longer a race between two large entities at war, but instead, it's a race among several large space-based companies all throughout different countries, including India, Japan, China, the United States, and more. And who I believe is leading the race is Elon Musk and SpaceX. The main goal of SpaceX has always been to reduce the cost of space transportation and ultimately use that to assist in the colonization of Mars. And if anyone is likely to deliver on that promise, it's SpaceX. Back in 2008, NASA offered them a contract for commercial resupply services to the International Space Station due to the success of their first privately funded liquid propellant rocket. This rocket was called the Falcon 1 and is what directly resulted in our current Falcon 9 rocket. The Falcon 9 was what showed the world in 2010 that SpaceX could be trusted to launch cargo and satellites into orbit. This was done when they became the first private company to successfully launch a new model of the Falcon 9 into orbit and then recover it successfully. This was a major milestone for the company and shows their reliability. 
That's why I trust their timeline when they say we'll be colonizing Mars by 2026. When asked why Mars, their reasoning was logical. Mars is one of the closest planets to Earth that has the chances of being habitable. The average distance between the Earth and Mars is 140 million miles, and it's located about 50% further from the Sun than the Earth is, but will still get decent sunlight as claimed by Musk. It might be colder, but SpaceX is confident they can warm it up. The atmosphere appears to allow for the growing of crops in a compressed atmosphere greenhouse structure due to it mainly consisting of carbon dioxide with small amounts of argon and nitrogen. Also, a cool note is that lifting things will be a bit easier on Mars because the gravity is about 38% as strong as a gravitational pull on Earth. How cool. The first humans may be on Mars in 2026, and that will be all because of SpaceX and all of the next generation space technology they're engineering. With its low cost efficiency, the future is going to be with us in no time. And that future is going to be displayed in the form of the Starship SN16 through to the SN20 and beyond. The SN16 is a prototype Starship that is currently under development at SpaceX Center in Boca Chica. Although it appears that Starship SN16 is basically finished, from the looks of its pictures, it's mostly assembled. It's rumored that the launch of the SN16 is closer down the line than we may all think. Some people even think it will be within the next week or two. Evidence of this can be seen through pictures and videos of SpaceX Starship employees preparing to remove the Starship SN15 from the launch pad, and it's rumored that shortly after it will be replaced with the fully prepared Starship SN16. At first I was curious how you could remove a 16-story tall massive steel machine around, and after doing some research I found out the answer was simple. SpaceX Starship employees use giant cranes controlled by handheld remote controls to hoist SN15 off of the launch pad. What is SpaceX's end goal for these rockets? They want to carry out an orbital test flight with a successful soft landing. But as of right now, there is no actual date for this test. SpaceX is unable to go through with this launch until it receives proper licensing that depends on the status of an ongoing environmental study of the super heavy launch operations. It seems they may fall outside of the original environmental impact statement that was prepared when SpaceX used the site of the Falcon 9. This assessment has to be carried out by the Federal Aviation Administration's Office of Commercial Space Transportation and they have yet to give a direct schedule for completing it. What's interesting is the fact that the public is going to be able to comment on a draft of the assessment, and those comments are going to help determine whether or not a new environmental impact statement is going to be necessary to proceed with more super heavy launches. The most recent update that we have on this is from an FAA spokesman on May 14th, 2021. When all of the necessary steps are made and progress can begin again, I theorize that SpaceX will be on a direct path to success with their first orbital launch using the Super Heavy boosters. And I, for one, am very excited to see what doors that success will open for SpaceX and for the future of space travel.